Did you know that applying hard wax oil on a timber floor is something you can do yourself? Today I'm going to show you how. Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Whittle Tips. Today we're going to discuss everything you need to know about applying hard wax oils onto timber floors. Firstly, let me say to you that if you've decided to coat your floors in a hard wax oil, you've made a very good choice. It's a beautiful product, it'll make your floors look gorgeous and it'll protect them for a very long time. The first important step before applying the hard wax oil is to prepare the floors of the timber. The quality of the end product is reliant on the preparation. Adding another coat of, of wax or whatever coating you're using isn't going to disguise a sanding defect in your floor. Um, we need to get the timber in the best shape possible and in most cases this will involve sanding. Sanding a floor should be done with a commercial machine um, as you can see here. Unless you're experienced in this department, our recommendation will be that you get a professional floor sander in to come and do this part of the job. Simple re reason being is that there's no amount of coating going to disguise a bad sanding job. Um, it's very disappointing when you look at a floor and it looks nice, but you can see the sanding marks in it. With a new floor, it will need to be lightly sanded to remove any marks from the installation process. Um, if it's an old floor with water-based coatings of polyurethanes on it, again, it's a, it's a massive undertaking to get those coatings off. And we would suggest using um, a professional floor sander, um, or if you're up to it, hire the machinery um, from a respectable de dealer and uh, do it yourself. So this stunning floor is in, a, in, in an apartment in Sydney that I was involved with. The boards, originated from the 1930s and were full of character and chop marks and it was just a, an amazing floor. Um, so the sanding process on something like this again is very different to a new floor for argument's sake. And this was very gently sanded um, to the point where you could walk across it in a pair of socks and you wouldn't catch your socks on, it, on anything. Um, it felt smooth to touch but we maintained all the character in the floor. Um, so again, happy to discuss options like this. Um, they, these floors are stunning and unique and you, you simply cannot sand them with a, with a big machine. So we're often called upon to address unique challenges. Um, this floor in Hobart is more than 100 years old and in being heritage, it, we cannot sand it. Heritage will not allow it to be sanded. And this is something that's really worthwhile investigating if you have an old floor. Um, we are helping assist in getting the best results on this floor. So once your floor is sanded and vacuumed and everything is cleaned and put away, it's ready for you to apply the coating. Um, you'll need to decide which of these four sheen levels would be your preference, um, either between a gloss and a matte. Um, classic is often a question we get asked and that is basically a 50-50 mix of matte and satin. Um, if you're planning on staining your floors, please watch the up and coming video in relation to that because the sanding process prior to staining is a lot more involved than simply putting a clear coat on your floor. Sorry about that, we didn't expect to have our local big brew disrupt our filming process and now it's starting to rain, so it's all happening this morning. So welcome back. Now this rain has gone, we've got the sun shining in Queensland, which is great. Your first coat. Um, we strongly recommend using the 2K booster in the first coat. It's only necessary in the first coat. Um, and the reason for this is twofold. Firstly, you you get a, the coating drying through, which means that your cutback between the first and the second coat is a lot better. It's a crisp, white, powdery cutback. Um, it also improves the durability of your floor. Um, over time, you might get a, a couple more years out of it. 
So using the booster, in this tin, there's only 100 mils of booster. And the reason for that is, is that you can mix in some of our special thinners into this tin, put the lid back on, and give it a really good shake for a couple of minutes. You then add that, which is the right quantity, into two liters of hard wax oil and roll it onto the floor. Once you've mixed the booster into the hard wax oil, your pot life in the tin is about four hours, but it will definitely start thickening up after a couple of hours, so just be aware of that. And obviously, if you've mixed it in there, you need to use it all. You can't save it or use it the next day. It will, it will turn and go hard, jelly-like. Let's pretend this is an example of your floor plan. Um, what you need to work out is the direction that the boards are running in. So this floor runs in this direction throughout this whole area. Um, and that's really good because it means you can cut off across these openings in the floor um, and do those areas first and get them out of the way. Um, even on the, the kitchen, this bit of flooring in here can be done before this main area gets done. The only challenge with this particular plan is that there's a massive cutoff here which we need to accommodate. Um, <clears throat> Once you've got an idea of where these cutoffs are, you can then plan the rotation or the direction that you're going to do the floor in. So if it was me, and it's not necessarily set in stone, but I'd do these small areas first. One, two, three, and four. Um, then this big area here can be done. However, this media room we need, you'd need to do next. So that would be probably number five. Get it out of the way and you've got a cut off in the doorway there. Um, then the direction that you're going to start in coating. So with this middle area, I would start on this edge and work in this direction. So you'll follow up that long run down there, this run here, and then back along this edge right to the end. Um, at that point, you can then work this media room halfway so and go to the other side, come halfway. The reason being is that this is your exit. So <laughs> you don't want to be stuck having coated past the exit and be caught in a corner, which isn't what that does happen. Um, but at least then you can get an idea of a bit of time spent planning how you do your floor is crucial in making it a, a simple, easy process. So once you've worked out the, the coating plan in relation to your particular floor area, um, the tools you're gonna need are obviously a roller and a brush for cutting in. The rollers we recommend are a 10 mil microfiber nap um, and they're 270 wide. You can use a 230 mil roller, but a 270 is a, a good size. Um, the 10 millimeter nap is important because what I find is, is that you tend to dip less into your tray. Um, you can get a much longer run with a 10 millimeter nap microfiber. Um, they really are a game changer. They make your rolling process fantastic. So, when you start that coating process, the first part of that process is cutting in around the perimeter of the floor with a good quality brush. It's important that it's a thin even coat off the brush and you need to try and emulate the amount of product coming off the brush as you would expect coming off the roller. So don't be scared to really work it in with a brush. Um, along those edges, in the corners, everywhere that you can't get to with a roller. So when we're using the roller, this is the technique that I would recommend. Um, you load the roller and squeeze out the excess in the tray. And then starting in the middle of a run, which is equidistant left and right, you start up against the wall and you go left a meter or so. You come through that run and go right a meter or so. And you continue left and right, as you can see in this, in this footage, until that roller has spread that dip a reasonably good distance. 
the whole thing about coating a floor is keeping it uniform and thin and uh, not being scared to overroll areas where you've got a previous run and an existing run to get rid of that line between the two. Um, keep a uniform pressure on your roller and just enjoy the process. So here's another demonstration. You're literally wetting the floor with oil and the good thing about these roller sleeves is that they continually lift off the excess. So when you over roll an area, it's picking up the excess and leaving a uniform, thin, even distribution on the floor. Sometimes in an emergency, you need to cross roll it. You should be fine um, and you shouldn't see those marks. You'll also notice that this hard wax oil has an exceptional coverage rate. On your first coat, usually you can expect in excess of 20 meters a litre and the second coat easily up to 30 square meters per litre. As I mentioned, you can also apply hard wax oils with a brush. This is a particularly good brush. Um, it's pure hog hair and you can see it in action on this next clip. As you can see, it's particularly good in getting into the texture surface on more rustic floors. The bristles get the oils into, those, into that texture and you get a nice even finish. It's also a very practical tool in that it's also great for any coatings, deckings, um, cladding on the side of a building, anything like that. It's a, great, it's a great brush. So before it starts raining too heavily, you have a choice of using the roller or a brush there's actually a third option, which is more of a professional application, but you can put the product on with a rotary polisher and a white nylon pad. On big areas, that's a great option. The method here is to pour some of the hard wax oil onto the floor in an area no bigger than the palm of your hand. That's enough to load the pad and get probably a seven, eight, nine meter run off the machine. When you start, never run the pad into the, into the puddle. You need to pick the pad up and put it onto the puddle. Otherwise, what happens is the edge of the pad will start flicking that product. And you'll be forever chasing little splatters across the floor. Um, when you're moving left to right or right to left, always cover the previous run by about half the width of the pad. And just work your way across the floor. So once that first coat is dried, we strongly recommend giving it a, a cutback or a light sanding prior to putting the second coat on. If you've got access to a polishing machine, one of these 220 grit screens is the ideal grit to be able to do that. If you don't have a machine or your floor sander doesn't want to come back for that particular job, you can fold this up or tape it onto a broom or something like that, or rub, rub it by hand, it doesn't really matter. Um, but again, that, that white powdery surface is what you're looking for. It means that when you vacuum it, it'll vacuum up easily, um, and it's a perfect surface for the next coat to go on. On your second coat, you don't need to use the booster. It's only for the first coat. Okay, so once your second coat is on, you need to leave it at least eight hours before you walk across it again. And obviously, in some areas, it might still be tacky. I'd leave it 24 hours. Um, the longer you can leave it to cure, the tougher it's going to be. In that first week, you wouldn't put rugs down and you wouldn't wash the floor in any way. It needs to be kept dry. And that's all there is to it. Applying hard wax is really not that difficult. It's something you can certainly do. 
Um, and we really love the fact that people give it a go and are happy with the end result. So to end off, let's take a look at the shed floor we did recently. Firstly, there's the floor before anything was done to it. We then gave the floor a light sand using my buffing machine. Um, we wanted to keep that texture and the heritage look in the floor rather than grinding it all flat. So the next part of the process was the first coat was put on the floor. The next day, it was then lightly sanded. Now you can see the first coat with half the floor sanded. And here's the end result, all finished with its final coat on. From this to this, I think you'll agree the difference is looking great. And thankfully, no cock-ups. <laughs> this guy paid us a visit on the, on the floor halfway through the process. Thanks for watching. We hope you find this helpful. Um, we look forward to seeing you next time. Please subscribe. Cheers for now.